Tube. Welcome back. Uh, I'm Erin, the Two Martini Stitcher, both here on YouTube and on Instagram, and I am so happy to be back on another Wednesday. It is Wednesday, October 23rd. October 23rd, next week is the last week of October, which means it's pretty much November, people. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize for last week mentioning that it was 10 weeks till Christmas. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, the blowback in the comments. Just kidding. <laughs> I, you all felt the same way I felt when the receptionist at the orthodontist mentioned it. Like, what? No. Mm. It is, I'm just, it's just water today. And I know this is two weeks in a row I have failed you. However, it is another early uh, videoing day. It's about noon my time because we're still... One car short, uh, just waiting for the transmission to come to arrive so that it can be put in the car. So we're still one car short and just juggling cars and picking up and dropping people off. <laughs> just means that I have to drive. I'm gonna be driving quite a bit a little later and I had to video early today, so I'm still hydrating. This is actually, this is actually what I drink all day long <laughs> until floss tube happy hour. Just water. Stay hydrated, everyone. So how was everybody's week? Uh, if you're new here, this is a channel about cross-stitch. We're gonna do a little bit of life updates and then we're gonna talk a whole lot of stitching. And if you're returning, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys so much coming and spending some time with me every week and uh, giving me great advice. And it's just, I know that there's so many floss tube channels out there because I watch a ton of them. And I just appreciate any of you that take a time to spend a little bit of your stitchy time with me each week. Um, speaking of floss tubers, I'll do my shout out for the week. Uh, this floss tuber I've been watching prob was probably one of the first floss tubers I started watching and just realized last week she might be, I don't know if she's local, but she is a Seahawks fan. Yay, go Seahawks. Um, and that is Crafty Gaming Jamie. Uh, and her videos are great because unlike my like long rambly videos, she's like a quick update person. So if you only have like 10 minutes to catch a floss tube, she's a fantastic one to watch because she has some amazing, the amount of stitching she does blows me away. Blows me away. She's got big full coverage pieces going, long dog samplers going, like, uh, her long dog sampler is her car project. I I hope to finish one one day and she whips them out in the car. So uh, go check her out. She's fun, upbeat, and lots of amazing stitching happening with uh, Crafty Gaming Jamie. And I'll link her below. So how is everybody's week? We had a pretty good week here. I mean, we're still short of car. Oh, well, that is what it is. But otherwise, it was a pretty normal, busy week. And uh, we did not do the pumpkin patch thing over the weekend. It is a gorgeous day here today. Like, I'm looking out my window. It is sunny. I just came back from walking the dog. It was the perfect fall day today. We did not have that weather last weekend. It was very cold and super rainy. And my oldest ended up coming home and spending the night on Saturday night. She went with some friends to a big, like, haunted forest type thing on Saturday night and just decided it was easier to crash at home and wasn't in a big hurry to get back to her dorm on Sunday. So we decided to ditch the pumpkin patch and just play some games and hang out with Sarah a little bit and watch the Seahawks <laughs> on Sunday, which they lost, that was sad. But it was a nice weekend. I got lots of stitching done. I felt like I got a lot of stitching done, but now I'm looking at my projects thinking, mm, maybe I did not. But I did have two finishes this week, guys. And neither of them are the one that you are thinking <laughs> I finished. So why don't we just jump into, um, 
what I worked on, and I'll show you the finishes as we go. Ooh, the first thing I did want to show you guys though is a previous finish because I was getting out, as I got out all the fall stuff, I came up on, I have very little Halloween decorations. It's pretty much, I just decorate for fall. But I do have this that I finished last year, and oh man, can you tell that this was at the beginning of the cross-stitching journey because it needs to be re-FFO'd. I don't know what I was thinking with this, guys. So I'll show you, because the stitching is not horrible, and it's a super cute pattern, but just know that I am going to fix this. Um, and I would love any advice for how you guys think I should actually finish this. I'm thinking maybe trying my hand at a stand-up flat fold. I hear Vaughn has got great tutorials. <laughs> maybe if I can get to a big box store and pick up some fabric and supplies, maybe I'll give that a try. But anyway, so here it is. Just a bunch of Hocus Pocus, and this is by Plastic Little Covers. One of my favorite little Etsy's. I don't know what, like, what's happening here. What's happening here with the jack o' lanterns? Don't know. Don't know what's going on with those. Clearly, not my best stitching. And look at this. Like, one, I had, so I just, I staple gunned it. Come on. I staple gunned it to a pre wrapped, like, canvas. And, but why didn't I turn down the fabric? I don't know. I clearly had so much fabric, which is why I think it'll, re-FFO pretty well, but it's all like weird and lumpy at the corners and it's not like, oh, you guys can't see. It's not like it stands up. I, I think I just had it leaning somewhere, but, um, and it barely fits on there and it's not even straight. What's happening? So I'm going to re-FFO this, but there it is. A previous finish. I think this might have been, this was definitely in the first like one or two things that I did and finished after I might not have even finished Abby's stocking yet and I just did this to get away from the stocking so is there hair on it oh no that's back stitching I thought there was actually cat hair on it there probably is so anyway so this is previous finish that I'm going to re-FFO potentially as a flat fold stand up flat fold what do we think mm, any other brilliant ideas let me know let me know how you would finish that because it clearly needs a redo and some love. So at any rate, so last week I didn't bring my journal up. Oops. I didn't bring my notebook up that tells me what I worked on for which tasks in Enchanted Stitching and School of Magical Stitches. So I'm just going to show you what I worked on. I have no idea what I worked on them for, but there was a lot. There were a lot in Magical Stitches last week. Was it last week? Yes, there were a lot of like individual assignments like it wasn't and it was still a lot because I think it would end up being like 1400 stitches which maybe feels like why I did why I feel like I did a lot of stitching because for me that's quite a bit but we'll just jump into it oh first is I did finally get back to Harry Potter book covers but not until Monday so I had the page finish on Tuesday and then I didn't even put it back on the Q-snaps until Sunday night. So, but it's back, it's back on the Q-snaps and I put in just the start on the next page. So 200 stitches, not a lot of progress to show, but it's back, I'm working on it. I definitely felt like I needed a little bit of a break after that page finish and I also just needed the time to get all the other tasks done in my fun challenge group. So, so there we go. There's the covers. I'm working on it again. I think this is all tree line. Here's the end. Well, not quite the end of the broom because I think there's a tiny little bit left here and then you'll see Harry's foot on the broom there. So Harry Potter book covers. I'm back to that hundred stitches a day, hundred stitches a day. And I got it to work for a task this week. One of the ta homework assignments in School of Magical Stitches had to do with the sec sep septum semprum uh, hex, curse, hmm, not sure what it is, that splits you in pieces, sort of, slashes you into pieces. Oh, that's a little dark. Got a little dark. Got a little dark on the floss tube channel. Anyway, so you had to stitch on something that was in pieces stitches one piece so maybe like a triptych or 
this, I figured it's seven, it's like slices of the seven book covers all together in one piece. So, so that's one homework assignment done. Check. 200 stitches there. So for last week, um, this I worked on, I know that this was for something in a collection and I worked on, ooh, hold on. I don't have the picture with me, but it's right. I do like being upstairs. So I worked on Love My Stitching. And of course, the cover page is not in the way that you could see it. Sorry, crinkle, crinkle. So I worked on this hands on design, Love My Stitching. And um, I just saw, I don't know if it's a new release by Brenda. Um, every, felt like the whole whole stitching world was on a retreat last weekend. I sat at home and watched Friends reruns. Not jealous at all. Hmm. Might have to get myself to a retreat next year. And I don't, did, did anybody else see it look like Brenda released something that looks very similar that is meant to go on a project bag and is different words and motifs? I'm going to need that. So I better finish this one up so I can buy that one and do that one too. Anybody else see that? I gotta find it, gotta find it. Anyway, so I worked on Love My Stitching and it was just 200 stitches. So I extended out this border a little more and started on this block that says Ada. So that's it. That's all the further I got on that. But I got a little more work. And then I worked on as my cursed piece. I, I worked on this for my cursed piece in School of Magical Stitches. And then I also worked on it for the piece I don't want to end. And that is Be Thankful. There's the chart, here it is. Be Thankful by Shepherd's Bush. And this I felt like was kind of my curse piece because I just had a hard time figuring out fabric. I think we've talked about this before, called for 10 count, and I couldn't find it or just wasn't anxious to work on a 10 count fabric. And so I looked at some other options, tried to find it, and ended up tea coffee dyeing some 22 count Ada that I had and stitched it over too. But between trying to figure out fabric, it also took me three tries to get all of the floss together for this chart. I don't know why. I either thought that I had bought it, bought it, put it somewhere else. I don't know. It took me forever to get this sucker started. Uh, but then when I did it, it went really fast and I didn't really want it to end. And after I did those two assignments, it was so close to a finish that I finished it. Eek. So there it is. Be thankful. All finished, guys. Isn't it so cute? Uh, when I finished the two tasks, I had it all the stitching done and I think these little apples were back stitched and maybe the veins on the pumpkin to finish those uh, tasks. And then there's a bonus or an extra credit assignment this month for School Magical Stitches that is 500 back stitches for the Half Blood Prince, so half stitches. And it, this didn't get all 500 in, but it's super close, so I'll do the rest of it in my friend's piece. And so I decided just to do the rest of the pack stitching towards that extra credit and bang it out. So there it is. When I finished it, it calls for, the pattern calls for it to be stitched, um, three strands over one on 10 count. And I ended up doing two strands over two on 22. But then the back stitching calls to be done in two strands. So I started with two strands and it looked really nice on like the pumpkin and all the vines and everything. And then I got to this turkey and I worried that it looked too dark. So I pinged my good friend Robin, who's Lady Robin S on floss tube and said, does this look too dark to you? Do I have to pull it out? And she said, mm, maybe. <laughs> and she's like, but I don't know if it's worth pulling it out. So I lived with it for a day and then decided 
that if I put the buttons on, it looks less stark. What do you guys think? I think I'm calling it a finish because I don't think I want to pull that back stitching out. And once I got all the buttons on, it didn't look so harsh. The back stitching on the turkey didn't look so harsh. Look at this cute little curl button. Look at that. There's a whole little Jabco button pack that goes on this, which I modified a little bit. I left a couple off. There was also like a big egg eggplant and a big squash that went down here that I just thought covered too much of the stitching. So I put this leaf down here that was supposed to be up here and left the eggplant and the squash off. So, but there it is. And I think I'm gonna maybe take this to Jolyn down in Acorns and Threads and have her finish it because I have no idea how I want this finished. And I just let her do whatever she wants. <laughs> That's maybe my plan for that. So there we go. Be thankful. Finished. And then I worked on Tingles. And I think, I can't remember what this one was for. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I worked on it for, but I um, am working, I'm doing them all as one piece. And I finished up that first block. I'll show you. I finished up this block and started on that one. So here it is. Tingles. So there we go. Finally finished up that first block. I'd really like to get the rest of this block finished. If I can get it to fit in to tasks like once a month and bang out a block or two. I think there's always more stitching in these little Lizzie Kate things than I think they are. They look like they'll be so fast, but they're usually about a thousand stitches. I mean, not that that wouldn't go fast, but when you're picking at it 200, 250 stitches at a time. So anyway, so that's Tingles got a little more work and I think that I still have, I, th I think I still need to do 250 more stitches on that to finish up an uh, extra credit, which we're getting short in the month here to finish up my extra credit. I think I still have three, three to go, maybe four, maybe three. Got to watch the movie. That one's an easy one if I can fit it in. Because uh, we're going out of town this weekend. Did I mention that? I know I've mentioned it at some point. Uh, the husband and I are headed to Indiana for two days, day and a half, for my, nine, for my grandmother's 90th birthday. So we leave on Friday, we come back Sunday, and we're gonna go to the Purdue game on Saturday. I am so excited. I have not been back to campus really since I graduated. And we're not going to talk about how many years ago that was. So we're going to go to Purdue game, see lots of my side of the family, and celebrate my grandmother's 90th birthday. So that'll be fun. And this is the same grandmother that I did praying hands for. So I'm excited to see her again. All right. So that was thankful. And then I worked on friends. And I know it was something that flies. I don't know which group it was, but I had to stitch on something that flies. And I originally goofed and thought I had to work on just a piece that flies. And then that had something that flies. And then I went back and checked and I had to stitch on the actual thing. So this got 500 stitches, which was fine because I needed it all for a bonus assignment anyway. I also used all these 500 stitches for something that looks like a pygmy puff because that little chickadee is fuzzy like a pygmy puff. So I finished out this coffee cup and up here, and that was 250 stitches, and then I went back and went, uh -oh. <laughs> so then I stitched the duck that flies and it was not quite 250 stitches, so I also started working on the football up here because footballs fly through the air. Yep, 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 they do. So I think I'll backstitch this little duck for the rest of my backstitches. So that might get a little tiny more work done. I really like stitching these like one whole motif at a time, but these assignments, 
lately have not allowed me to do that. One, there's a lot of stitching in this central perk motif, but I'd like to backstitch this, finish the football, finish this, get that all backstitched and move on. So that's my friend's collage. Oh, I should show you what it looks like. What do we think? And so this is what the finished piece will look like. So you can see I've still got a lot of work to do um, on it, but I'm up and around in here. And this is, I got this on Etsy, and it is by, the designer is Anastasia Imanova, but I think that her Etsy shop is and I am cross stitch or something like that. I will, all that information will be below. I always, guys, I always, always put all the information for the whips in the description box. So, because I'm not that great about saying what fabric I worked on or yada, yada. Um, so I put all that information below. This is on an 18 count white Ada, super exciting, with all the called for DMC. So there we go. So that's the friends collage. I'm finally working on that again. It had been a while since I had gotten that one out. Uh, what was next? Mm -mm -mm. Looking at my calendar where I write everything down. Okay, so I do know last week for Enchanted Stitching, we had to do like different colors for um, Lock, Shock, and Barrel. That's where I was going with that. And so the bulk of my color stitches, I did a little bit of white on November yearbook. I did a tiny little bit of red on five o'clock, which was not a finish. I know we all thought that that would be finished that this week, but it just didn't have enough stitches left. It didn't have enough stitches left for any other challenge. And I didn't have time to just finish it, especially when I realized there was all that beating. Uh, so the bulk of my color stitches went into green and I worked on everything is fine thread hanging and this is do I have a picture of it hold please because there's not like a cover picture that there wasn't a picture in mm -mm -mm. I don't know where it is I don't know where it is it's it's the welcome everything is fine sign from the good place so I worked on the T or the H, this H and a little bit of I. So there we go. And this is also on 18 count, 18 count Ada, I believe. Did I write it down anywhere? Oh, nope, it's 16 count. And I am using 702. I can't remember what color, color it called for. I think it called for another one in this color family, but I liked the 702 better. It's nice because it's one big chunk of color. Okay. Oh, I worked on Be Thankful more. That's done. I finished Be Thankful. I pretty much cranked that out all weekend. And then new week. So it's a new week. Let me see if I can pull up my um, assignments because I didn't bring my journal. So let's see. Okay. So for, okay. First thing I worked on this week, School of Magical Stitches, something with an entryway. I worked, I decided to work on November yearbook by Lizzie Kate, my little monthly yearbook, because it has a house on it. And it got me so close to a finish that I just powered through and finished it. So this is my second finish of the week is Lizzie Kate November. There we go, yay. And this is all, um, this is, I, I do all of these on 28 count linen in flax with the call for, not, it's not called, I think it calls for all weeks dye works, but it has a DMC conversion. So I've been using the DMC. I made a couple changes on this. The tree, I didn't bring up the pattern. Um, the tree, I changed to Scuppernog, which my super smart friend Carla let me know is a grape. <laughs> it's grapes. 
I don't know. Like, I've read To Kill a Mockingbird. That's how she's, she's like, oh, I just know because To Kill a Mockingbird, which <laughs> read in high school, I probably was just like, oh, an arbor of some type of plant. <laughs> Didn't bother to look it up. Uh, see, you learn something. Floss tube helps you learn. Watch Floss tube, learn something new. So I used that for the tree just because I wanted the very variegation. And then this, these leaves, I used it for that too, which I think it called for like moss with, but it had little weird lines. The pattern had weird lines in the leaves. And so I just decided to use the variegated. And then these windows were supposed to be the darker blue and I changed them to the teal to match my frame. And these little doodahs were supposed to be the screen and I just changed them to the teal so that there was teal in more than one spot. It's a long explanation that you guys don't really care about. Look, it's done. I still need to touch the charm, but I'll do that right before I switch it out in November. So November's ready to go, which is good because we're getting close to November. Um, and then I also worked on for enchanting stitches for a Halloween or spooky piece. I worked on my contribution for our Stiach team's combined piece. So I'm in the Merry Marauders team. And have you guys noticed that the Stiach has been suspiciously missing the past couple weeks? <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. It hasn't fit into tasks and I've just had a lot of other stitching to do. And I, I, I don't think it's completely abandoned. All of the back stitching was last week's pattern. The pattern is amazing. If you guys are a Golden Girls fan, follow the hashtag, check out it. The pattern is amazing with the backstitch details and the jewelry is in like metallic floss. It's amazing. I just, I haven't done their faces or any of the backstitch yet. I'm so sorry to my team. Uh, although I feel like it's a pretty laid back team and I don't know that like me not finishing on time is gonna keep us from winning anything. However, um, we're doing a like kind of combined piece. So everybody's working on a section of this Harry Potter sampler. Mm, that's, I kind of thought it was, that was the cover photo. Oh, the, here's the cover photo. So this is, Harry Potter sampler that we're working together on together as a team. And here's the Etsy and I'll link that. I'll, I'll put that, all that information below. So I'm doing this little block with the broom. So that seemed Halloween spooky to me. And I'm just about done and with it. So I'm just gonna keep, I've been picking at it a little bit the past couple days, like yesterday too, just to get it finished and mailed off. So there it is. So I did 250 stitches of gray background. <laughs> and this is just on 14 count. Ada, um, I just have to finish filling in this and then there's a little bit of back stitch, and then I can get that sent off to our team captain who I believe is gonna sew all of our parts together into one big sampler. It's kind of fun. I'm down with that. So that was a Halloween or spooky piece for Enchanted Stitching this week and I'll get that finished up probably before we leave on Friday. Maybe I'll just finish it this afternoon. Then I was so excited to pull this piece back out. In my, it, this, this piece lives in my Downton Abbey bag by uh, Garin Toten Bags. And Annie, the Joyful Stitcher, showed hers this week. And I don't think if she knew, we're bag twins. <laughs> I so wish we lived closer because I feel like we would be besties. That might be a little crazy and stalkerish, but I think that we would and we need to live closer. So, and I keep this piece in here because I just think it's like a very royal piece. And that is Game of Swans on my long dog sampler. And I started this in, was it October? October for, or end of September. End of September for long dog Sal with Carolyn Zook, C. Zook Stitch on Floss 2. And she's doing, I think she's doing Hoity Toity. And there's some other fun people 
doing, I know Carla from Carla Being Crafty and Carla of Rolodex Stitches are both doing um, froth and bubble, bubble and froth. I don't know, but man, seeing their whips is making me want to stitch that one too. Like that one's going on the wish list. But I've got some others to finish first, um, especially Game of Swans. And this I did for Trust the Pattern. Because if you guys remember, we had a whole conversation about was the color right for the flower stems. And I've decided we're trusting the pattern. We're trusting the pattern and trusting the color palette. And honestly, I love it. Do I lose my needle though? I've been having trouble with needles, guys, lately. Don't see the needle on that. That's problematic. Hopefully it's in the bag. All right. So I did 200 stitches, 250 stitches, because I'm actually using this for trusting the pattern and how I would protect my house from Jack. I would use a tack swans. Swans actually are known to be kind of nasty. So I would have a tack swans that would protect my house. And we're also trusting the pattern. So 250 stitches. I did this whole flower and the stem and some leaves down here. So there it is. Guys, this is so beautiful. I, oh gosh, I love stitching on this. If I were a monogamous stitcher, this would be it. I would just sit and stitch and stitch and stitch on this until it was done. Maybe someday I will decide to do that. But in the meantime, it was very sad to put it down after 250 stitches. <clears throat> Oh, sigh. Too many fun things to stitch. Not enough time. So that's where I am. That's what I've worked on in the past week. Plans. Mm -hmm. What else am I working on? Do, do, do. Did I actually hit everything? I feel like I've worked on more than that. Nope, that's it. So plans. I am going to be working on what else do i have left this week i have something to stop jack can't remember what i'm planning to do for that um oh reminds me of zero is going to be tingles see i knew tingles was getting more work reminds me of zero is going to be tingles because there's jack-o-lanterns on that like his nose and what else do i still have to work on oh Light dark, I'm gonna be working on taking knee high. Knee high is going with me, guys, I'm going back to the Midwest. So knee high is going with me to the Midwest. So I'm taking that with me. I think that I might be taking winter ABCs with me as a start. And, oh, I'm gonna, ha I have another plan new start for this week. So one of the tasks is something with water, the Aquamenti spell, and that's what I'm gonna use to protect my house, is I'm gonna build a moat around my house, or how I would stop Jack. Moat? Yes, a moat. And I'm gonna start, I decided to start Turkey Bay. I've had this kitted up ready to go, and then somehow it didn't get started, but I finished one turkey pattern, so I get to start a new turkey pattern because all the turkeys, all, I need all of the turkey patterns. Um, yeah. So this is gonna get started. I have everything all ready to go and I'm probably gonna start that today. So plans, start Turkey Bay, take knee high with me. I need to figure out what else I'm taking with me. Maybe I'll just stitch on just knee high. I don't know. I feel like I need to take two projects. Something else may go with me. Maybe another new start. I need to figure out, I, I feel like, do you guys feel like everybody's starting to make plans already for 2020? I feel like I need to get my stitching plans and life together. I definitely need some Christmas starts. So I think November will be all the Christmas starts. I'm gonna start at least four Christmas things that I already have picked out what those are gonna be. This month I did not fill out or look at the 24 hours of cross stitch acrostic. And I think that that's why I didn't have a hard, like I felt a little more discombobulated. Like every week I was just pulling stuff that matched uh, the tasks, which is fine, but 
the past few months, I had done the acrostic and I would kind of plan out, like I would plug in what new starts I wanted to have. And just like in September, I wanted to work on all of my stitch along. So I plugged those in and I felt like it gave me a little more direction for trying to fit things into tasks. So I think for November, I'm gonna do the acrostic again, plug in all of my planned starts so I can get some Christmas stitching started because I have a lot of Christmas stitching that I would like to start. I have a couple things, one thing. I have Holiday Quaker by Lila Studio and I finished one of the chalkboard ornaments, but I have the other two I would like to do. I have a Mill Hill kit, I have Peace on Earth, I have Bendy Stitchy's Little Noel. That wouldn't take very long to bust out. So I'm going to try to make November a bunch of Christmas starts and stitching. That's my plans tentatively. And then I need to kind of figure out 2020. So I know like this year, a lot of people did stitch nine. And how do you guys, maybe you guys can help me. How do you kind of plan out your year? Like, do you figure out what you're going to start? Do you make resolutions on what you're going to finish or work on? I'm definitely starting Farewell to Anchor. That's my new year start. And I have a couple other things that I know I want to start certain months. Uh, like, I know what I want to start on my birthday. I know what I would like to start on mine and my husband's anniversary in April. I want to participate in Mania this year. And I was thinking I would do a bunch of non-seasonal starts for Mania. But you guys, give me some feedback. How do you decide or do you even not? Or do you think like, I don't care. Like, I don't need to make like yearly plans or goals. Maybe I don't need to. I don't know. I do feel like some direction for the year. It's a little bit of, a little bit of focus. My, definitely would not hurt me any. A little bit of focus. I mean, that, honestly, it's why I like the challenge group so much because it gives me a little bit of focus. Otherwise, I think I'd be over here just paralyzed by all the things I want to stitch. And I'm collecting new stuff to stitch every day, which leads me to haul. I did have some stitchy retail therapy stash, stash enhancement. Why don't we call it that? I had some stash enhancement this past week. So I will show you guys the few things I got started or that I got so that I can get things up to start more things. Uh, the first thing I got was the color and cotton uh, harvest mystery box. I did a video of an unboxing. So I'm not going to show you guys all here because I want this to be kind of spoiler free, although I think most people who bought the box have got it and have opened it. But if you want to see what was in the box, check out the unboxing video. I got the mini box and I will say I thought it was a fantastic value. I thought the mini box was a fantastic value. I didn't feel like it was too little, like not enough stuff to feel like I got a cool box of stuff. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was a, it's my very first color and cotton purchase. It, um, was my very first like mystery box purchase and I would totally do it again. I'll totally do it again. And if I have a chance to snap up their winter box, I will do that for sure, for sure. So the other things that came, I got, I was watching uh, Stitch All The Things, Christine, and she was showing uh, her pattern, Kind and True, that she got. Hold on, I have it right here, I know. She was showing, it's by Ellen Chester, Kind and True. And she was showing this and talking about doing a stitch along with somebody, I can't remember who, and I am totally gonna horn in on their stitch along because I, uh, nothing like inviting yourself to a party, right? Because I purchased this a while ago uh, and I just love it. I'm pretty sure that um, Michelle Bendy stitched it. I think maybe, Deborah, do you have this as well? I feel like you do too. Maybe you've already stitched it. I don't know. I just love this pattern. I love this blue. 
I want to put mine and my three daughters initials on it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So Christine Stitch All The Things was showing this and was talking about ordering the silks for it from this place, The Little Thread Shop. And I, I think maybe she didn't have the information in her drop down box or she was like waiting to talk to the owner to see if she could give out her information. But I jumped the gun and messaged her for it and she gave it to me. And so this is the price list that she sent. It's the little thread shop on eBay, but you can do direct orders with her uh, and I will put her information. You can just email her, which is what I did. I just emailed her and ordered um, some silks for this, for Kind and True, and also for the Martini Witches. I'm so excited. <laughs> I've done very little stitching with silk, just that autumn drum, the little bit of autumn drum I've done. And I love them. And so, I want to do some more, but if you have tips for stitching with silk, I hope that I'm doing it right and doing it justice. But I think her name's Margaret. Don't quote me on that. I think her name's Margaret. Little Thread Shop has really great prices on silk threads, and I think she was even having an extra sale on the Belle Soir in October so that they were even better prices. So I got, and MPI. So I got the call for silks for Martini Witches and Kind and True. And I don't know when that stitch is starting, but let me know, Christine, because I'm inviting myself to your party. So there are, there's all the silks. Oh my gosh, guys, they're so beautiful. They're so beautiful. Look at that. What is that? Grape juice. Yes. So there's those and then the MPI. So I'm pretty excited. The Martini Witches is going to be my Halloween start. And then I will start kind and true <laughs> whenever that's happening because I'm now ready. Oh, I don't have fabric for you. I got to get fabric. Okay. <laughs> so those all came in. And I was really glad that I placed the order for these the day before the transmission died. <laughs> so I'm really going to enjoy these silks because they're probably the last for a while. But I'll put her information in the drop down box if you want to check out her uh, prices. It was I shot her an email. She responded very, very quickly. She had everything I needed. I just sent her a list. She had everything I needed. And invoiced me like the next day, popped it in the mail and I got it. It was an easy, easy shopping experience with Little Thread Shop. So there's that. Uh, oh, I also, seriously guys, I did not, it just all came the same week. I don't know what to tell you. Have you all seen the cunning cross stitch letters from Hogwarts stitch along that's starting next year? The borders are out and the border itself is a lot of stitching. I am not at all convinced that I am doing that stitch along. Haven't, haven't done any, that's all. I haven't done any kidding up of that project. I am in no way committed to doing that. It looks amazing. I have a big Harry Potter piece already going. And I'm not saying I'm not doing it because um, Mystic Fabrics did a mystery fabric for the Letters from Hogwarts uh, stitch along. So you could order a cut of fabric and it was going to be a mystery die to add to the mystery. And I, of course, ordered it. Of course I did. So I have fabric for a stitch along that I am in no way committed to doing. But here is the fabric I got from Mystic Fabrics. Four letters from Hogwarts. Ah, how beautiful is this? And I got a 32 count Lugana. So this is 27 by 37, which I think was, a, she said, was more than enough for a really good border on it. But look how perfect this would be. Look how perfect parchment it would be. It's kind of like 
gray and taupe. And if I don't do letters from Hogwarts, this fabric will be perfect for something. <laughs> but it was it was kind of a limited time thing. Like you had to order, and I didn't even do it the first time. The first time I was like, mm, no. And then there was like a second run of mystery fabric for the stitch long, and I had to do it. I was like, oh, if you're giving me a second chance, then I'm getting on it. And while I was on her site ordering the fabric, kind of let a piece of fabric come alone. I got the needles dance pattern. I keep looking at this and looking at it and thinking about it. And I kind of like it on the white a little bit. Here's the thing. I like the blue except for this color here. So I actually think I might do it on the blue and just change out this where it says dance. I don't know. And when will I start this? I don't know. Maybe mania. But I, it's one of those patterns that I, I feel like if I think three or four times, oh, I really need that pattern. Just get it. Just get it. I also got a few patterns from Stash and Load. I've been mostly good of staying off of it, but this one gal's album is just too good. Um, the, the one that really got me because there's always one. There's always one, right, that you're like, I have to have that, but if I'm paying shipping, I'm gonna look at their whole album. Check this out, Turkey Love. See, speaking of turkeys, give me all the turkey patterns. Turkey Love by Plum Street Samplers. Look at those long leg turkeys. That's hysterical. I love the turkey love. They're in love, and they're turkeys the size of a house because they have legs like a giraffe. <laughs> and then, I also, you guys know I love the funky birds and this funky peacock, too good. Maximum, Maxim and Zoya. Funky names for funky birds. And then uh, I also picked up this little house needlework, Season's Greetings. Love the little cardinal. That's cute. And then this is where I think I went off the deep end because I thought, well, she had all of these Fragments in Time by Summerhouse Stitchworks, the 2018 set of Fragments in Time. And there were like three that I, or four, that I kept going, oh, I like that one. Oh, I like that one. So I finally said, just give them all to me. But she didn't have number five. So it's all of the Fragments in Time by Summerhouse Stitchworks, except for number five. So, which is now on my wish list because you can still buy these. But they're all like, look how good they all are. I just love that color palette. And they're just perfect. And there's a free border set. I don't know if I would stitch them all as one, but now I kind of feel like I want to on one big piece. I don't know. Or just, this would be just perfect for a whole set of little smalls in a basket, right? Oh, look at that one. And the Weeping Willow. This one I really, really wanted. Oh, and this one, the funky bird. Look at that fancy bird. He's so fancy. <laughs> Add them to the pile of I will stitch someday. And then the last thing I got, I know guys, this is crazy, right? But, uh-oh, what is all sticking together? Oh, that is. Michelle Bendy Stitchy Designs released a couple new patterns and um, Abby Top Knot Stitcher carried them in her shop so I had to run right over and get Stitch Always. I love this. I told you I'll stitch all of her crazy little plants. <laughs> this now makes three that I have and need to stitch. <laughs> I should just do a Bendy Stitchy Month but I love that. Stitch Always and I think I just want it up on, I'm going to get that white magnet frame up and I think I just want it flat folded up there and of course while I was on her shop I had to get some more needle minders because she had some amazing ones this is going to go on peace on earth I love this look at that it looks like a snowflake right looks like a snowflake and I have some winter patterns that I want to do but if you look closer it's Yoda 
How fantastic is that? Love Star Wars. Love Yoda. It's a Yoda snowflake. And then, of course, I had to get a couple more Harry Potter ones. I solemnly swear. And always. I've seen so many patterns with this. I love it. So more needle minders. I did put up. Oh, you guys can't see it. Hold on. I'm going to turn the camera. Can you see that over there? Whoa, there it is. This was at the Target dollar spot, maybe over the summer. And it's just like one of those little metallic pig boards. So I hung it up to put my needle miners on. It says, don't mind me, except they didn't have an apostrophe. And I tried cutting an eye in half and it doesn't stick. So I may have to change it to say something else, but I thought that was funny. Don't mind me with all my needle minders. So those will be added to the needle minder collection and go check her out. She's got great stuff and new bendy stitchy design. She also has a reproduction sampler that's fantastic. Uh, although I'm not really a reproduction sampler gal yet. This is now what I say yet because tastes are changing, man. See all your guys' great big old samplers? Never know. Never know. Okay. I think that's it, guys. That's all I have except for giveaway. So last week, the giveaway was for these cute little holiday patterns that came out of a magazine. There was these pumpkins, Thanksgiving, this little reindeer kills me, and then these little Easter ones. And it was in a separate video if you didn't see it because I got cut off. Whoopsie doodle. Does that make me a real floss tuber? Mm, that I finally got cut off by my camera? Mm, or does it not make me a real floss tuber until I figure out how to put those two sections together? That's probably it. Okay, so I had 16 people that wanted to stitch the holidays. Let me get my random number generator up. Just use the, I'm, we're high tech here, people. Okay, so one to 16, generate. Oh, 16. So that is Debbie Smithheart. Debbie Smithheart, you won the holiday patterns. I really want to see this little reindeer. Like, he's stinking adorable. I... <laughs> Congratulations. Hit me up. My email and Instagram are below. So if you get me your address, I will get these right out to you. Congratulations, Debbie. So this week, I am going to pass the stash on Be Thankful. So if you guys saw that and thought that was super cute, I will be passing the stash on Be Thankful. And if you want, if whoever wins it wants the other half of the fabric that I tea coffee dyed myself, the 22 count Ada, if you want that, I will send it along because I used half of it. There's plenty here to do it again. If you don't want it, it won't hurt my feelings any. But if you do want it, it's yours because I thought it was pain to find fabric for that. But I love it. I love it. Now it's done. So that will be the giveaway. So since we were talking turkey, all video, just tell me I want to stitch the turkey because there's an adorable turkey on there and then you can maybe back stitch him with one strand and let me know if it looks better. I think that's it guys. That's all I've got for you today. I think we did all the things and I hope you guys have a wonderful week and have time to stitch and I hope the weather's great where you guys are and I will be back next week week hopefully with some plans hopefully with some more clearly defined plans for november and you all let me know what you how you how you set your plans that's what i that's what i really want to hear how do you make how do you decide what to work on and especially like for the new year because it seems like it's that time of year nine weeks till christmas people <laughs> you're all welcome and i will talk to you guys later bye cheers